Lisa Cameron is a UK politician or Member of Parliament. She regularly attends Westminster where she makes the case for her constituents across Scotland. She's also important to the world of crypto because she's the chairperson of the Crypto and Digital Assets All-Party Parliamentary Group. In brief, this group is responsible for guiding the UK on its mission of becoming a global cryptocurrency hub. So I took a break from moderating and comparing at the UK's major Bitcoin conference called the Bitcoin Collective to interview Lisa. She then made the case for Bitcoin and crypto in Parliament just days later. She requested to meet with Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. He's arguably the second most important person in Britain after the new crypto-friendly Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Firstly, I mean, we just came off a talk here with Samson Mao, where you're talking about how, you know, governments can run with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. But I wanted to ask you just a general thing. Why are you here at a Bitcoin conference? Well, it's in Scotland, which is my home turf. So that's a big draw for me. Um, as part of my education as chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group, um, I'm, you know, engaging with the sector and the industry in the widest way. So. I have spoken to um, companies who are involved in CBDC, stable coins, um, we've looked at crypto tokens and Bitcoin is obviously part of the sector. It's very, very important for me to understand the differentiations but also um, to understand you know, how um, the technological advances and what's happening internationally as well as you know the potential for the UK can be taken forward. Interesting and you mentioned lots of these cryptocurrency buzzwords that we all deal with now on a daily basis. Yeah. What for you personally is the difference say between Bitcoin and crypto or Bitcoin and NFTs or is there a difference or do you, do you see them all in the same sort of light? Well, as part of the, as chair in the All Party Parliamentary Group, we're looking at the sector as a whole. So we're not sort of saying, well, we're only going to deal with Bitcoin or we're only going to deal with, because consumers who are our constituents are engaged with the industry right across the board. Um, and our key sort of issue um, is about consumer protection, it's about looking at regulatory frameworks moving ahead in the UK, which in my understanding and from the session we've had today at the Bitcoin conference, um, you know, some of that relates to Bitcoin, some perhaps not so, so greatly because um, of the decentralised nature of it. So what we need to do, I think, is firstly in the Parliament have an understanding of all of these things, which yeah. is no mean feat, you know. Yeah. It's uh, it's quite a different language, as I said, um, you know, when we first had the discussions in the Parliament and money was being grouped into um, this sector and fiat, you know, like we were explaining to the MPs that fiat wasn't a car. Um, so, no, yeah, really, people, they're looking at fiat 500s instead well, of fiat you know, money. It's different terminology. We are, you know, having to think of all the acronyms that are used and, and incorporate them now into our understanding and knowledge. So we, and I include myself in that, we are, are on a learning curve. Yeah. Um, and it's just very, very important because UK government has um, a policy vision that the UK will become an international hub of cryptocurrency and digital assets. So we need to understand the workings of that, nice. the challenges ahead. We need to understand how to put consumer protection at the core of that as well and what businesses need in terms of regulatory clarity. And uh, I need to understand how Bitcoin fits into all of that or how it doesn't, how it yeah. might be separate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's amazing. It's interesting to see the level of understanding like are there, have there been any conversations that have been quite striking you, know, you brought up fiat I, I recently had a conversation with a, an energy company and they were asking where you find the bitcoin when you mine it because they yeah. thought it was a physical you know mining yeah. operation um what sort of level of understanding is there currently in, in westminster it's growing now the group's been running for about seven months now um we have our inquiry ongoing what we find is that, you know, when the group was formed, obviously we get a lot of interest from members of the Parliament, members of the House of Lords who are already aware of the sector, who are also, you know, perhaps financial, um, you know, have financial backgrounds in perhaps their formative careers. Um, but now what we're having to do and want to do is scoop up 
the educational um, evidence base and understanding of those MPs who perhaps haven't been aware at all much of the sector and who maybe have formed their basis of understanding solely on sensationalism right. rather than an evidence-based, information-based, um, you know, uh, sort of understanding or knowledge because when we come to have debates in the parliament we want those to be very balanced and evidence-based moving ahead. Yeah, which is the hardest part, right? Cutting yeah. through all that noise and that sensationalism yeah. that you bring up. Yeah. And what about personally, can I ask, have you ever, say, bought an NFT? Have you ever bought Bitcoin? People have asked me that and no, I don't have, as chair of the group, I feel it's important that mm -hmm. I have a kind of objectivity and distance from that in terms of, you know, my own personal But you have fiat money, right? You, you don't have a fiat car, but you have fiat <laughs> money. I don't have a fiat car, no. <laughs> I, I, do, I do have fiat money. Yeah, and that's a very good point. But just in terms of making sure that, you know, anybody who's looking at the work we're doing and scrutinising it, which is, you know, perfectly the way it should be in terms of um, democratic politics, is not thinking that I have some, um, you know, personal investment in this yeah. that's driving it ahead. We're looking at it very objectively and, uh, you know, we want to hear from all parts of the sector. We want to, you know, have an informed approach going ahead and we don't have any preconceived um, you know, notions of that. What I want to do is learn about the technology yeah. and learn how it's used. Um, but I think if I all of a sudden became, you know, like... Uh, you Bitcoin know, some, uh, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, there's a new part of technolo a technological language that I'm learning. A Bitcoin maxi? Yeah, maxi? maximalist. Yeah, it maximalist. means you, you only really care about Bitcoin and oh, everything else you see is separate. Right, OK. Is what Samson was talking about with yeah. um, Pierre Poiliev, the, the Canadian yeah. minister. So yeah. if that were to happen, then I think it would skew the report. It could, you know, mean that I'm less objective to... But right now you're a fiat maxi. Forward. You are technically. <laughs> to buy the, the wine that was talked about in, yeah. the, in the session, yeah. <laughs> wow, you know, um, I, I think we all know, particularly from the pandemic, that finance is shifting. Most people pay for things using digital technology now, and actually, you know, fiat, notes, pounds, currency, um, yeah, that's all shifting and progressing. And Web3 and the innovations moving forward and the whole industry of digital assets is um, transforming. Yeah. And we have to we have to really understand that in yeah. the parliament and we have to make sure that we support the vision that the UK is a hub of the future. Because otherwise, if we don't, then we'll fall behind. Yeah. Um, and I think, so there is tremendous potential for innovation and growth and jobs of the future. Um, and we see that already developing and, and fantastic research base here in terms of technological expertise, universities right across the UK who are at the helm of, of innovation and technology. We want to really um, you know, maximise all of that and be a place that people want to do business um, for the sector. And I think um, you know, part of my role is it's almost apolitical in a sense because we have MPs and, and members of the House of across all parties, is about just making sure we have the education piece, we understand what's needed in terms of um, clarity moving ahead, we can keep prioritising these matters in the Parliament because they weren't spoken about before. We had a first debate just a couple of months ago. The first debate on yeah, the taxes? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's so early? Yeah. Okay. So, and, and I raised a question on Monday to Jeremy Hunt, the new Chancellor, yep. mentioned about the conferences that are ongoing in the UK this week, how important they are. And, uh, okay. we're you going spoke to, about this conference? Yes, I did. I mentioned the, yes, I mentioned the Digital Asset Summit and also of course, this, yeah, that was in London. the Bitcoin Collective yeah. Summit. Yeah. yeah. So um, I mentioned both and I'm speaking of both and uh, he's aware of it. Uh, we're meeting with the Minister to take forward his understanding and engagement with the sector mm -hmm. and yeah, Westminster is really open to this technological um, discovery, advancement and wants to be at the helm of it. Very good. I think that's a lovely note to finish on. Thank you so much, Dr. Lisa Cameron. Thank you. This has been a Cointelegraph interview.